Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 251 of Manage the Wild. I'm your host, Nick Madsen. Today's podcast is going to be a little bit different, probably cheesy. Uh, to some of you, you're going to like it. Some are going to hate it. And most of you are just going to scroll on by. So it's OK for me anyways. Uh, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. So I would talk about the reasons or that I'm thankful that I was raised around wildlife hunting and being outdoors. Uh, it's those experiences that have led me to the opportunities that I have now. Being able to work in habitat, being able to work with wildlife, and being able to meet with people who are actively studying wildlife and to hear uh, the stories that they have and, and see the passion in their eyes. That I am grateful for all those and thankful for those opportunities. And it's all because when I was a kid, my dad did the same thing. Uh, my family was big time goose hunters. Uh, the more decoys you have, the better it was. Uh, there would be mornings when we would be going out on the boat where the front light on the boat didn't work and I had to hold a flashlight or the fog would move in and I would be hanging out in front of the boat as a 10 year old, just froze to death because my gloves were in coat were cheap and trying to see exactly where we were going as we went through the water. We built uh, a blind on a stretch of the river that made a hard turn, and the geese coming out of Idaho would, that was one of the first areas that they would come to on that river. And we had a very good experience, a very good time on that river, but it was highly competitive to get there first. So there would be mornings where we would leave the house at two or three in the morning, just to beat the people coming out of Salt Lake who left at 1.30. And we would get the to there as quick as possible. Or if we were unloading the boat, we would be racing those guys in the dark through all the swamps and all the dead trees that were under the water and all the different sandbars trying to get to that location first. And when we did, we were always rewarded with good opportunities. As a child, some of the memories that still stick with me today. Uh, they're just amazing. To be able to watch a, a flock of geese come in from 10 miles away, you're spotting them with the binoculars. You got binoculars all day, and then you start calling to them and flagging them. And all of a sudden, you just see them turn and head right towards you. And I would get down as a kid, but I had the spot through the bind that I could look through. Little toolies and cattails blocking my vision, and I would move, and my dad would tell me, stop moving. Don't look at them. Keep your face down. And you could just watch these birds as they were high up, all of a sudden tuck their wings and they would start tumbling. Just a most amazing thing to watch geese tumble into your decoys. And then they would just, right as they would go to sit down on the water, somebody would yell, take them. They would all stand up. Boom, boom, boom. Shells are flying. The smell of gun smoke. Just the smell of being out in, we call them the duck ponds. It's just a different smell. It's a horrible smell, the duck ponds, but it's something that still sticks with me today as an adult that I experienced as a child. And it's those memories of watching geese fly by, seeing deer swim through the cattails, raccoons wandering by, skunks, all the different wildlife that I saw as I spent no time on computers. We didn't have them when I was a kid. Didn't spend any time on TV or PlayStation or Xbox didn't have those as a kid. I would spend my Saturdays and Sundays and the days I wasn't in school, I would spend them out in the blind. Talk about some days were long. It'd be hot. Geese weren't flying. Geese weren't moving out of Idaho. And you would just sit there bored. And then my grandpa or uncle would fall asleep and I'd take cattails and I'd start stuffing them down their waders or stuffing them in their nose. But it's these moments like this that have led me to all the things that I'm doing today. Working with habitat, habitat restoration, working with juniper removals and those type of programs, understanding grazing and working with Cattlemen's Association to better understand how grazing works, working with and talking to professionals in multiple states, understanding how they are managing their wildlife based upon their grazing and their livestock. But then being able to go to mule deer captures and be able to put my hands on an animal that's living that is frightened and fills all the things that I would fill and to be able to put radio collars on and know that this data is important for the survival of that species, being able to work with elk and moose, 
going into a trap and sorting elk as the craziness happens. Elk are jumping over your head. You're getting slammed into by cows running 100 miles an hour or darting a moose uh, in a church parking lot. These are the experiences that I'm grateful for now. And it's those experiences that I had as a kid that has led me to wanting to help wildlife today. So when you guys are going about your Thanksgiving, think about the reasons that you like wildlife and be thankful for those reasons that has got you where you are today. All right, you guys have a happy Thanksgiving tomorrow. Hope you have a great day. Stay wild.